See what I mean? Rinso White, that's what I mean. Rinso gets clothes, Rinso White. Uh, say, Andy, Andy, uh, where has you been for the last couple of days? Oh, Amos, I tell you, the kingfish and me has been up to our ears in work. We have just incorporated our new business. Our new business? That's right, son. Today is the grand opening of our employment agency. Oh, I'm telling you. The makers of Rinso bring you the Amos and Andy show with their guests for tonight, Jack Benny and Rochester. <laughs> If you're ever in Montclair, New Jersey, and you hear a policeman's whistle that goes like this, it'll most likely belong to Officer William Howell. You've probably seen his picture in a Rinso ad. You see, Mrs. Howell whistles while she washes with Rinso, and Officer Howell has gotten used to hearing the Rinso whistle around the house, as he puts it. Well, you'll have to ask a missus if you want all the dope. All I know about Rinso is that it sure gets my shirts white. Sure, that's because Rinso gets out more dirt. Try it yourself, ladies. And now, here are Amos and Andy and their guests, Jack Benny and Rochester. The best way to avoid having to take a job is to make sure that someone else gets it. And evidently, Andrew H. Brown and George Kingfish Stevens subscribe to this theory because they have recently opened an employment agency. As we find them now, they're talking over the prospects of their latest enterprise. Well, then, uh, there you is. The papers is all drawn up for a new corporation. Now, the only thing left is to find a name for a business. And I think I already got that. Uh, Stevens and Company Employment Agency. Now, hold on a minute, Kingfish. Hold on. What is that Stevens and Company? I thought we were supposed to be 50-50 partners in this. Yeah, well, I tell you, Andy, uh, since the employment agency business was your idea, I figure it's to make you the most important partner. That's why I make you uh, the company. <laughs> company, huh? Did that make me the most important? Oh, certainly. Yeah, but wait a minute, though. If I is only called company, how is people going to know which company I is? Mm -hmm. For example, how will they know I ain't the company at the end of Sears, Roebuck, and? <laughs> Uh, why, well, and uh, uh, they can't miss. After all, uh, ain't you a big white-collar executive who... Say, wait a minute. Uh, ain't that Amos in his taxi cab driving up and just stopped in front there? Yeah, yeah, that's Amos, all right. Yeah, and here he come with some fancy-dressed fellow I never did see before. Hello there, Amos. Hello. Well, hi there, fellas. Uh, glad I found you. And I want to introduce you to a fella who just come to town, uh, Brother Stevens and Brother Brown. Shake hands with Mr. Rochester. Glad to know you, gentlemen. Glad to know you. Uh, fellas, I was just driving Mr. Rochester down to his uh, boss's hotel, and I dropped by in here because he thinks maybe he'd like to join the lodge. Mm-hmm. Oh, wants to join the lodge, huh? Yeah, well, Mr. Rochester, this is uh, just the right time for joining because the initiation fees has just been reduced for one day only to three dollars. Uh, you has got three dollars, Virginia. Well, uh, to tell the truth, what I got happens to be just a little short of three dollars. Uh, how short? Three dollars. <laughs> well, you see, fellas, Rochester tells me the man he's working for is a little stingy. A little stingy? Why, my boss is the only man I know who laundries his pipe cleaners. <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, well, uh, if you ain't happy with your boss, uh, you were certainly looking at the right men to get you a better paying job. Uh, uh, what kind of work do you do? I'm called a valet. I do the laundry, the cleaning, the cooking. I mow the lawn, wash the dishes, drive the car, shine the shoes, press the clothes, and other various miscellaneous sundries. You do all that and they still call you a valet? Yeah, any resemblance between my title and the work I got to do is purely coincidental and backbreaking. <laughs> and all that work for $10 a week, if he picks up my next option. Well, uh, now, tell you what, uh, you fill out this application blank here. Now, uh, suppose we could get you a job with less work and more pay. 
Would you be interested? There's no question about that, Brother Stevens. I'm so tired of having a job where the pay rattles that if you can get me one where the pay rustles, I'm your man. <laughs> Tell you, Rochester, I just won't stand for it anymore. <laughs> Showing up five hours late. Hmm. Always going to Harlem to shoot dice wearing my clothes. By the time I get them back, I'm standing up straight, but my pants are kneeling. <laughs> Is that the way to act? Well, answer me. Well, go on. Hmm. Oh, you can't. No wonder you have no answer. But I've got one. I'm firing you. And don't think I wouldn't just because you've been with me eight years. That doesn't mean a... All right, all right. Those tears aren't going to help you. This time you've gone too far. You're fired, I tell you. Fired. Fired. Hmm. Good thing Rochester isn't here. He might have quit. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why do I put up with Rochester? Why don't I really fire him? I'll do it. I'm going out and find an employment agency right now. Well, here we is, Rochester. Thank you, Amos, for driving me all the way downtown to my boss's hotel. Uh, I say, Rochester, uh, the doorman's coming over here. He must be looking for you. Yeah. You looking for me, doorman? Yes, and your boss is looking for you. He's been looking for you for the last five hours. Uh-oh. Where's my boss now? I just saw him in the lobby. Oh, that's all right, then. I'll go in through the side door and pick up his suit I left to be pressed. Uh, say, Rochester, I thought you said that you pressed all of your boss's suits yourself. I do when he wears them, but when I wear them, I want them done right. <laughs> Well, goodbye, Amos. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Yeah, so long, Rochester. Hey, buddy, you don't have to pull out. You can pick up a fare right here at the hotel taxi stand. Oh, thank you, Mr. Doman. Uh, thanks very much. Thank you, sir. Oh, taxi. Taxi. Uh, taxi right here, sir. Uh, uh, where to, sir? Uh, say, do you happen to know of a good employment agency up in Harlem? Uh, yeah, sir. A couple of friends of mine runs one. Hey, that's great. Uh, how much will you charge to, uh... Drive me just a few little blocks like that. Well, it ain't exactly a few little blocks from 48th Street up to 135th Street, mister. Uh, but the charges is just what it say on the meter there. Oh, well, all right. But isn't it the same price for one passenger as it is for a cab full? Oh, yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, one of five make no difference in the rate, no, sir. Well, in that case, uh, listen, driver. Yeah. I'm saying I do see it, see it, see it, see it, see it. Or, the, or the best you can, yeah. Uh, yeah, sir. Anybody need a cab going to Harlem? <laughs> Anybody going to 110th Street? Hmm. Uh, this cab goes right by 96th Street, 72nd Street, 59th Street? <laughs> Too bad it isn't raining. <laughs> Uh, tells you, Henry, that this employment agency is going to be the best venture we done ever ventured into. Yeah, we ought to do big things with this new client, Rochester. Oh, uh, yeah, there's no question about that. Say, uh, wait a minute. Uh, look like somebody coming in here, Henry. Excuse me, is this, uh, Stevens and Company? Uh, yeah, sir, yeah, sir. Uh, come right in. Uh, you was talking to Stevens. And Company. <laughs> uh, put our card in your pocket, mister. Yes, I suppose you was in the market to engage some help. Well, yes, I'm looking for a valet. A valet? Why, if there's one thing this office has got, mister, it's a valet. Yeah, that's the one thing, all right. <laughs> well, that's very nice. How much uh, does this man get? Well, uh, uh, the man we has got in mind gets uh, $12 and a half. $12 and a half? Hmm. Isn't that a little over-sealing? 
Uh, well, of uh, course, you understand that that is the full valet and price. That even includes buttoning up your vest for you. Well, <laughs> you see, fellas, I'm, I'm very warm-blooded. I never wear a vest. Yeah, I don't, huh? Never wear a vest. Well, that cuts down to work, all right. I uh, <laughs> uh, guess it ought to cut down to price, too, huh, King? Oh, yeah, with only the coat and pants, uh, we can cut the price to 12 flat. Well, to tell the truth, boys, I'm more than just warm-blooded. In fact, I'm inclined to be just a teensy bit hot-blooded. So half the year, I... <laughs> I don't even wear a coat. Uh, well, with only the pants left on, I guess we can settle for eleven fifty. Yeah, there's one good thing, Kingfish. He can't get any more hot-blooded than the coat and vest. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I guess he got to stop there already. Uh, then it's settled. Uh, when can this man of yours start? Yeah, well, we ain't exactly sure. Uh, but if you just write your name and phone number down on this application card here, why, we'll get in touch with you. Yeah. There you are. And I'll be expecting to hear from you. Oh, uh, yes, sir, Mr. Yes, sir. We're getting right on the ball. Uh, so long, boys. Don't let me down. Oh, no, sir. No, sir. Say, Andy, Andy, where is that court Rochester filled out? We has got to phone him and tell him that we got him a brand new job with a boss... That's just the opposite of the chiseler that he's been working for. Well, I wonder what will happen when Andy and the Kingfish discover that they have sold Jack Benny his own valet, Rochester. We'll find out in a moment. But right now, since we've heard what Officer Howell, our friend from the Rinso ad, had to say on the subject of Rinso white shirts... I think we ought to hear the other half of the story, Mrs. Howell's version. She writes, My husband can stop traffic with his whistle, but the wash I hang on my line stops traffic, too, because it's (whistles) Rinso White. And it isn't only that Rinso gets my clothes so white, it's that it saves me so much time, with three children to look after and a house to take care of. Using Rinso is like having a helper at every turn. And Rinso is so easy on my clothes. Those suds get my clothes clean as can be. But they're so easy on fabrics and safe for my washable colors. You bet I wouldn't use anything else. Now, I guess you're not surprised that Mrs. Howell's favorite song goes like this. Rinso White, happy little wash day song. Rinso White, birdies sing it all day long. Your clothes are so white and colors so bright. You sing as you work along. Rinso White, happy little wash day song. And now back to Amos and Andy and their guests, Jack Benny and Rochester. Well, Andy and the Kingfish have certainly messed things up through their new employment agency. They've gotten Rochester to resign his job as Jack Benny's valet to take a brand new job as Jack Benny's valet. (laughs) Of course, the boys don't realize the situation they've created, and we find them now elated over their great success. Oh, I'm telling you, Andy, this employment agency is great. The very first day we open, we get a high-priced valet a brand-new job. Yeah, at the rate we're going, we're going to need another filing cabinet for all the names of our new clients. Yeah. Uh, Oh, say, by the way, son, uh, don't you think we ought to see if the filing system that we got is functioning? Functioning? How are we going to do that, Kingfish? Hey, well, you is in charge of the employees. Yeah. And I takes care of the employers. That's right. So you take that employee's card that Rochester filled out, and I'll take that card we got from the man who's given him the job. Mm-hmm. And we'll see how the information fits together. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, say here that he worked for uh, Mr. Benny. Uh, then I looks at the card I got and finds out the name of the man he is going to work for from now on. Well, uh, what do it say on that card, Kingfish? It say that, uh, uh, look like we must have got these cards mixed up here, so. <laughs> uh, must have got the employee card in the employer file there. Yeah, uh, here, let's switch cards. Okay. You give me your card, and you take the one I got. Yeah, that ought to fix it. Now, uh, what do I look for? Well, now, let's get a brand new attack on this whole problem. Yeah. <laughs> now, this time, you tell me the name of Rochester's new boss. You tell me that. Yeah, well, from what it say on this card, Rochester's new boss is a man by the name of Benny. 
On the cards you got, Kingfish, who is the last man that he worked for? Uh, according to this card, the name of the man is, uh... Let's switch cards again. <laughs> What's the matter now? What's the matter? Well, I ain't sure, but it must be the duplicate filing system we got here. <laughs> now, there's only one thing to do. Now, let's turn the cards down on the desk here. Turn them down face down. Okay. Now, clear your mind a minute now. Yeah. And let's start over. Okay. I was ready here, Kingfish. But somehow I got a feeling yeah. about this. Uh, so was I. A sneaking feeling. <laughs> Benny ain't just no ordinary name, neither, you know. No, I knows I done seen it somewhere before. In two places, that's the trouble. <laughs> oh, well, there ain't no use of postponing this, Andy. Now, look here. Just turn up one little piece of the corner of the card and look again. Now, take it easy and sneak up on it. I sneak him. Kingfish. Yeah. I see it again. <laughs> Brother Ender... I was kind of hates to admit this, but I was afraid that without realizing it, we has just committed industrial bigamy. <laughs> yeah, and since they made that a legal offense, we better get right over and see our lawyer, Gabby Gibson. <laughs> and now that we done told you the facts, Gabby, uh, what we want to know is... Is we really in trouble or is we just in trouble? Boys, you're in a mess. You're really in a mess. What you've done is manslaughter. Yes, indeed, it's manslaughter. <laughs> manslaughter. Oh, me. How you figure that, Gabby? Well, you messed up the job of this man. When he find out, he's going to slaughter you. That's manslaughter if I ever had it. <laughs> Uh, look, Gabby, uh, you as attorney at law, now, can't you kind of peek around the corners of the law and see if you can't discover a couple of loopholes? No, sir, don't think I can. Really don't think I can. No, sir. Yeah, uh, not even a little one that I could crawl through alone. Now, wait a minute. Never mind the kingfish. Find a size 42 loophole so I can squeeze through, too. There's only one way out of this. One way out of this. You've got to convince Mr. Bennett this man he hired is essential and is frozen in his old job and therefore is not available. Not available. Now, wait, wait a minute there. Wait a minute there now. Uh, uh, what does this essential mean? Uh, what's this Rochester do? What's his job? Uh, he's a valet. A valet, huh? <laughs> Sorry, boy. Sorry. A valet ain't essential. Ain't essential, though, indeed. Uh, now, hold on there, Gabby. Do you know what a valet do? Of course I do. Of course I do. A valet dresses people, put the clothes on. Yeah, and that ain't essential? Yeah, you just try going out in the street without your clothes on, you'll find out. <laughs> well, boys, I see what you mean. I really see what you mean. But I doubt if the law covers that. I doubt it covers that. Yeah, well, exactly what do the law cover? Because if you can tell us about it, I got an idea that we can use it to sort of convince Mr. Benny. <laughs> Now, I understand what you say, boys, but how is it the man was available this morning and he's frozen this afternoon? Answer me that. Yeah, well, uh, you see, uh, Mr. Benny, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, well, you know about Congress, don't you? Congress? Yeah, you know, they is down in Washington. Oh. Then they haven't moved. <laughs> moved? Uh, well, uh, uh. Kingfish, was they supposed to move? <laughs> oh, no, no. They was lucky enough to get a lease renewed on their old players. Yeah. <laughs> now, listen, boys, this is all very interesting. But what has Congress got to do with my new ballot not being available? Well, uh, Mr. Benny, you know Congress. Uh, a couple of years ago, they made up a board down there to take care of jobs. It's called the NAOB. Oh, the NAOB? No. I don't think I've ever heard of that particular board. Oh, yeah, no, well, uh, don't make no difference, because just this morning, the NAOB decided to smack the public with a new ruling. Yeah, that's right. We got it right here. We done copied it out of the book. Hmm. That's pretty fast. The ruling is made in Washington this morning, and you copied out of a book here in New York this afternoon. <laughs> How come? Huh? Uh, Priorities. <laughs> And is there any way I can arrange to read this ruling? Oh, yes, sir, yes, sir. Here you is, Miss Benny. Uh, got it copied here, identical, verbatim, word for word. And besides that, we didn't change a thing. <laughs> Let me see here. 
A guaranteed copy of ruling number 0001. Quote, whereas and wherewithal we is sitting on this bureau with not much to do, we is unanimously decided to inaugurate a new ruling on Valentin. Hmm. Now come the ruling part. Naturally. The paragraph one. This law we is resolving is meant for all employers looking to employ, hire, or engage valets, especially and to wit, employers whose last name just happened to begin with the letter B. <laughs> hmm, small world. Well, uh, that's only because they does everything in Washington alphabetical, Mr. B. Well, I'm glad it's at least impersonal, not just aimed at me. Oh, I know. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, well, go ahead. Uh, finish reading the thing. Yes, I'd love to. Last and final, Perry Giraffe. Any person who thinks this law is unconstitutional and wants to check up with the government, this person hereafter referred to as the stool pigeon <laughs> has got to ask permission through this bureau, and the answer is No. <laughs> Yeah, them boys down there sure know how to plug up the loopholes already. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad there's not much more here. Witness my hand and seal signed... Hey, wait a minute. Whose signature is that at the bottom of this legal booby trap? Oh, him. Why, he is the most important man in Washington. He signed all them big things. John Hancock. <laughs> Look, boys, forgetting everything else, what this boils down to is you can't produce the ballot you promised me, and I've already fired my old one. Now, what are you going to do about it? Oh, don't worry about that. Uh, that's part of our business. Uh, if you just tell us the name of this man that used to work for you, why, we goes out and does our best to get him back for you. Well, all right. But if you don't have him working for me by 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, you two are going to be in plenty of trouble. Or my name is in Jack B. <laughs> Go on, Kingfish. Read Rochester the last part of the ruling. That's the most important part. Elucidate, gentlemen, elucidate. Yeah. Well, uh, this is what it say here, Mr. Rochester. Quote, uh, and this law is meant for all valets, especially and to wit all valets whose name just happened to begin with the letter R. Yeah. So you see, Rochester, according to this new law, we just can't put you in the new job. But we is willing to humiliate ourselves in front of your old boss and get your job back for you. You mean to say I got to go back to work for Mr. Benny? Well, I uh, guess you do. Well, poverty, move over. Your wandering boy is home again. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, just put uh, our card in your pocket here, Rochester. And as soon as this ruling thing blow over, we can get you a job that pays folding money. It can't be too soon for me. I've been dreaming of a green Christmas. <laughs> Rochester. Oh, Rochester. Yes, boss. I'm faced with a financial uncertain Christmas. A Christmas like I've always Rochester, known. Rochester, please stop that squawking. Do all those things I told you to. Because if you don't, as soon as a certain ruling is changed, I've got a card in my wallet of an employment agency that can get me a high-class ballot, just like that. And I'm just waiting for another ruling to take a card of an employment agency out of my pocket that will trump your card. Brother Andy, don't sit there like you was dying. Oh, Kingfish, we done certainly messed up this employment agency business. Yeah, now, wait a minute, Dad. No use getting downhearted so soon. Don't give up, Andy. Andy, you was a big executive with a white-collar job. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I is a big executive. And I'm going to keep that in my mind all the time, too. Big executives like me never give up. Uh, see there, Andy? Uh, maybe that's another client. Wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, come in. Well, Shorty the Barber. Uh, hi, hi, King Pig. Uh, hello, Andy. Well, Shorty, hello. How, how's business at the barber shop? Oh, it, 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 it ain't so good. I've I, I been losing money. I, 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 might take, I might go into bank with... Uh, I, I just about busted a bro. Uh, I can't complain. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, well, that's fine, Shorty. Uh, long as business is so good, would you? Maybe us executives can hire you some extra help. Uh, yeah, well, that's what I come in for. You see, I, I, I need a shoe shine boy. Mm. Oh, yeah, well, uh, here, I'll get an application blank right here. Now, Shorty, uh, how much do you pay the shoe shine boy? Oh, it, it's the best paying job in the world. Uh, he, he, he can save a lot of... Uh, he, he'll get rich quick. Uh, well, he, he, he can make more than... More than uh, not enough to live on. <laughs> No, yeah, I see. Yeah, but but uh, but on top of the ten dollars I pay, the you know, shoe shine boy, he 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 might make another ten dollars in tips. Ten dollars in tips, huh? Mm. Shorty, I is glad that you come to big white collar executives like us. We has got just demand for you. Uh, we is. Yeah. So long, Kingfish. I'm taking that job myself. <laughs> Amos and Andy will be back in just a moment. Meanwhile, let me say that I'd be the last guy in the world to exaggerate. For instance, I wouldn't dream of telling you that when you use rinse on your dishpan, your dishes march off the supper table, wash themselves, rinse themselves, and stack themselves neatly in the cupboard. But soapy rich rinse will make dishwashing a lot easier than it is with bar soaps. You don't waste time trying to get suds, no sir. Those rich rinse suds soak grease and crusted food particles loose in a jiffy. A swish of your dish mop, and everything is shiny bright and clean as a whistle. And rinse easy on your hands. Doesn't get them rough and red. So tomorrow, get rinse for dishes, for all the soap and water jobs around the house, and for a Monday wash that's <laughs> rinse white. And now, let's hear what Amos and Andy are talking about. In other words, Andy, uh, Rochester is going back to work for Mr. Benny, huh? Yeah, too bad, too. I sure feel sorry for him. Yeah, that must be a tough job, all right, working for Mr. Benny. Yeah, Rochester claims it's the only private home in America that's got a swing ship. <laughs> to be with us again next Friday evening at this same time when the makers of Rinso will again present the Amos and Andy show. Our thanks to Jack Benny and Rochester for being with us tonight. They have appeared through the courtesy of the American Tobacco Company, makers of Lucky Strike Cigarettes. This is Harlow Wilcox saying good night to you for all of us. is Life Boy America's favorite bath soap? I'll tell you two big reasons. Life Boy in your daily bath gives all over protection from B.O. Yes, from head to toe it stops B.O. And Life Boy gives protection that lasts and lasts. So play safe. Make sure Life Boy's in your soap dish. It's the only soap especially made to stop B.O.